This episode of Raw, I believe, on March 25th was one of the pithiest Raws in modern times. There was something to, to, to grab on, to sink your teeth into, to, to hold on to and remember and talk about at the water cooler the next day. Remember when they used to say that water cooler talk? You have to go into an office to do that. No one wants to work in an office anymore. Well, and also, I'd never wanted, even before the pandemic or anything else, to be just standing around drinking other people's bottled water that they just had their hands all over the spigot and everything. But nevertheless, do you know that the Allstate Arena, Brian, in Chicago, Illinois, which was the site of this extravaganza, that's the old Rosemont Horizon. I'm glad to see the old deer still standing, just with another name. I thought they had just built a whole new building. Have you ever been to the Rosemont Horizon? I never have, but I've always loved the name of it. Because it's in Rosemont, Illinois. What's the horizon part that sounds cool? Yes. Well, you uh, actually, when the sun comes up in Rosemont, there on the horizon, you can see the building. So there you go. And this thing was sold out. 15,810 people is what they announced. And we saw many of them on camera. And the 11th straight television sellout, according to the statistics we have available to us, and they're crowing here on the program. They're fucking, and that ain't going to last until, uh, or as, I'm sorry, the record, this was the highest paid attendance for a Raw since some time or other, but that's only going to last for, for a couple more weeks until the Raw after WrestleMania when they can get more people in the building. This this is, is suddenly uh, blossomed quickly on them, didn't it? And you know what? Before this giant crowd, this hot crowd, they had one of the best episodes of Raw in forever. And I can't even remember any of the matches. It wasn't even about the matches. Because <laughs> none of the matches were matches you really wanted to see. But you didn't care. That's how hot the stuff that isn't in yeah. the matches is. You're willing to... Just sit there and watch these other matches. Never yell boo or boring, nothing. Just watch them, enjoy them. But when the big stars come out, it makes it all worth it. This was an amazing episode. And then, as Gary Hart would say, this shit gonna get started, brother. But anyway, um, and, and by the way, also, <laughs> the central pieces of the show that we're about to praise here were, I mean, and there was other people involved, obviously, but Cody Rhodes and CM Punk, again, this is what they're not only doing the best work in the biggest company in the goddamn world, but Tony had them. And, and, and apparently now we've seen he devalued both of them during the time that they were there. We just talked about in the clip. If you're listening to this as a podcast or a single entity, we just spoke earlier in that clip about how that Punk increased the quarter, the, the viewership in his quarter hour from before to afterwards, the same amount of people that watch most of Tony's television programs alone. Can you imagine what kind of merchandise they may have made money between the, the number and the rating that they can brag about? And this is the, you know, the the era of bragging about ratings and numbers and all the TV rights fees, and is it worth it and is it not? The, so the, the numbers that Punk is getting them, just coming out and speaking, hurt, not able to work, not able to advertise matches, is worth it for their television. And what do you think they did in Chicago on brand new Punk merchandise these people have never seen or whatever the fuck that they have for this occasion? with 15,000 people in the building. They may have made a profit on Punk for what they they paid him just to show up and talk. How, what is that, $100,000 if you prorate his multi-million dollar contract? They made a profit on him. They're in the building, probably. Well, you oh, said they're there and they're doing great work. It's not just that. They're moving numbers. Every single metric you can look at. Ratings, interest, merchandise. Everything goes up. And the quarter hour ratings were remarkable this week. 
Well, and, and when we've been doing our history segments and talking about when we shot an angle and increased the house $10,000 or whatever, this is the same principle only multiplied in, 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 however many exponentially times over in terms of what are your metrics of your business and can you see them rising? Are you selling more tickets? Are you selling more merchandise? Are more people watching the TV? Whatever can be measured is up over here. And the guys in the middle of, of a lot of it were guys that were working for Tony Khan that couldn't coexist under his fucking structure for whatever reason with the people that he surrounded himself with. But Nevertheless, I just think I'd I'd love to know the merchandise numbers because back in the Attitude Era, it, it, on a house show or a TV taping, what I'm not talking about WrestleMania or some you know big deal like that. But I would get the reports, and if you did eight or ten or twelve dollars per head in those days with those prices, twenty five years ago, they liked that. That was that was great business. Well, just imagine if they were doing the same price. Ten, ten dollars a head. The price from twenty-five years ago would be one hundred and fifty thousand dollars doing in merchandise. So what the fuck, right? In one night. Anywho, they did the the SmackDown recap and then brought Cody out to a huge pop at the start of the program. And have you noticed, Brian? The the crowd shots, the the beauty pans of the building. Uh, the, well, we've talked to the new camera angles. They've got, obviously, with the new, I don't know what his title is, whoever replaced Kevin Dunn, whatever their title is. From and ESPN. The new, <clears throat> yes. And and the, the, the new television people, I'm sure he's brought in, whether it, is there a new director in the truck? We don't know. Is there a new camera people or are they being told to shoot things in a different way? Whatever the fuck. The director's on top of shit. The ways of shooting, the new camera angles, the lighting. The show is looking amazing and the signs are coming back in the crowd. And usually it's everybody looking at their fucking phone, right? But now people are actually wanting to get involved. Oh, look at my sign. The better production, and the new production is better than what it's been. For everyone that raves about WWE production, the actual television shows were problematic. A lot of those things that were wrong are gone. And they're yeah. introducing a lot of new elements. You're not getting the fast cuts when action's happening. Like, when I say fast cuts, 10 camera switches in five <laughs> seconds. Yeah. So you don't actually see any action, or or the or the the the, the zoom in and out, the disoriented. Rah, 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 rah. No, I mean every once in a while at a backstage brawl, it might add to things, but it was just being relied on because that's what they were doing for so long. They got a new look. And listen, we're about to talk about this Cody segment. We're about to review it. When the Rock comes out, when you get to that, just that spot alone, that shot, I should say, alone, they went to a different camera shot than the. Steady cam, they didn't go close up. You got the whole view of Cody in there with the rock and the screen behind him. It yeah. looked incredible. They're killing it on production right now. It's great. And it, it makes it more of an event. Also, look at this shit they're covering. Anyway, nevertheless. It makes it more tolerable in the bad moments on the show or the moments where it's yeah. not really anyone <laughs> hot. At least it's not that tired production anymore. It helps. It, it, while they're standing there staring at each other in meaningful fashion, boy, don't those pictures look nice. But uh, but no, I, I get your point, agree with it. And uh, Cody again was did the babyface promo here. And he talked about it. He does this stuff. He talked about agreeing to be the best man at some fan's wedding. He, Brandy said, who's Anthony? He said, I don't know. Where he went to a kid's birthday party or blah, 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 all the stuff he does. And Roman Reigns likes to say, well, I pretend to be this, pretend to be. Well, I pretend to be the champion because the champion isn't here. And the people are Chen Cody, Cody. And, of course, you know, again, you can see the dusty cadence. I respect you, Roman Reigns, but I hate your guts. And he got in the line about, you know, Roman. And his cousin can't have the wank fest at WrestleMania like they wanted, and the people popped on that. You know, they're obviously, we've talked about this, they understand 
the top guys, not just the rock has a double standard, the top guys get a double standard and they should, and they're giving them one. And also, to be honest, some of these networks, they can afford to piss off. I go, well, I guess they're, they're still going to be on speaking terms and doing business with USA, right? But Fox, maybe they might tell them to go piss up a rope, might they not? You have to wonder if the tone of this show and a lot of the elements on this show is kind of a, a nod to the future on Netflix and what the show is going to be like. Well, and, and Punk mentioned it later on when we get to him. But anyway, but Cody's, it was a babyface promo and it ended up with, so will you, I can't do it alone. You guys have come with me this far. Will you ride with me? Will you fight with me? I want all of you to be involved. I mean, it was like <laughs> the Reverend Ernest Angley, lay your hands on the radio. And he said, well, all of you stand up and point at the WrestleMania sign with me. It is a classic fucking shit. And they're fucking pointing at the sign. And suddenly, the rock music interrupts. And he has not been advertised. This is a surprise. And the people go batshit. And there's the, that you were talking about, there's the shot and he's coming down like the, you know, the fucking bad guy in a cowboy movie down the streets of fucking Dodge City. Trying not to step in cow shit. And... Rock gets in the ring and they bring the music down and that took three minutes of just the rock walking to the ring and them having the fucking stare down with each other. And then once the music comes down, they stare at each other with the game faces and various inflections and glances and etc. with the fans chanting everything from, you know, Rocky to Cody to this is awesome, whatever. They stood there <laughs> And stared at each other, and nothing happened for over three minutes. And then Rock walked up to Cody and whispered something that you couldn't hear because they didn't have the microphones up. And he turned around and walked out. And I will, I've got to be honest, at the time I was thinking, oh, geez, if that's it, I'm, I'm afraid that might not have worked well because not only did they milk these people seeing The Rock live and he never spoke a word to them or did anything. But that was kind of fucking flat, right? But at the same time, with what dramatic foreshadowing, drum roll please, brunch, with what happened later on, it, it, it works, but I was concerned for a while that what happened later wouldn't happen later. What about you? Well, until we saw what happened later, I was more concerned about the dynamic I've talked about before. Cody's doing his promo, and it's good, and he's getting a good reaction, but it seems like there is an element of a mixed reaction there. And then The Rock gets the surprise babyface pop. People are delighted to see him there, and it overshadows Cody. By the way, you know who everyone keeps forgetting about, including me? Roman Reigns. <laughs> Isn't that who Cody's feuding with? You forget about the guy. The guy's the champion. He's not even around. But it, I was intrigued. You know, it was like lost in translation. What did he whisper to Scarlett Johansson? What did The Rock say to him? Was it, notice I picked on your mom and not Brandy? I'm smart? I don't know, but I was intrigued by it. It was good. And again, keeps you guessing. Didn't know The Rock was going to be back out later on at the very, very, very end. But it was an intriguing segment. Well, and, and apparently now the latest that I've heard is that the, the it has been revealed that, because later on in the show, Cody made a reference to, he was asked what Rock said, and he said that he made a promise he can't keep. And what they're saying now is Rock whispered, I'm going to make you bleed tonight, which as we'll get there. But, uh, but again... It, 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 when you talk about Rocky getting a pop, Rocky, yeah, you know me and Rocky, we hang out. Um, when you talk about the Rock getting a pop and a cheer, here's the thing: a lot of these people are going to cheer the Rock because it's the Rock, whether he's a heel or a babyface or whatever. Because especially the the ones here, they're seeing him in person. And yes, the company's been hot, and they're not just selling. 7,500 of the 15,000 tickets because they thought Rock might be there. But on a surprise, and also, 
this is good for business because The Rock has been advertised. And normally you think, yeah, if The Rock shows up, it's a big deal. They got to schedule it. They're going to advertise it. When he shows up as a surprise, this goes back to the to the old days. If you don't do it too much, a surprise on a program like this, and don't beat it into the ground, you can put in people's mind, shit, we never know when The Rock's going to show up now. He doesn't have to be advertised, or we could see Roman Reigns or whatever, so we better buy the fucking ticket if they're here in town. Because fuck The Rock might be here, that type of thing. And it's better to do a surprise on a show that's already a sellout, so you don't have to second guess and say, oh, how many more tickets would we have sold if we had announced The Rock? Exactly. But a lot of the people there are such diehard, you know, loyal fans that if they get The Rock for a surprise, they get The Rock advertised. And The Rock say, hey, they're still going to cheer him because it's The Rock and they're going to see him live. But it's eyeballs and just people buying tickets and, you know... It, the, the 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 when you've got a dynamic like that you've got to work with the fact that there's going to be a dueling response but nobody's pissing on either side the fans are not pissing on either side so that's not a problem but a good opening for the show intriguing segment and again to bring up what i said earlier the camera work when the rock came out was fantastic presenting him as a heel with that camera angle looks so good it was great and you know then <laughs> That was 20 minutes into the program. And then basically besides spots and little, you know, backstage, hi, what color underwear are you wearing? All that blah, blah, blah. What we got for the next 40 minutes was the judgment day playing darts in their clubhouse and spilling their plans to rule the world in front of everybody in a conversational fashion. And then Ricochet versus JD McFunco. And that was, uh, then we were at five minutes to nine o'clock Eastern by the time that that was done. So this is, again, this three-hour program is built around the in-ring dramatic soliloquies and conversations amongst the stars with filler in the middle to keep the people apprised of what's going to come up next, the next monologue or the next presentation. Can you deny that? I can deny that I watched a Ricochet match just because I was waiting for CM Punk. You know, I thought they would start with Punk when they didn't. Now you're just waiting for, is it going to be 9 or 10 o'clock? And I was waiting for 9 o'clock. <laughs> well, and as I mentioned earlier in the clip we played, if you're listening to this as a complete entity of a podcast or a program, uh, I was trying to hang around and see if Punk was going to show up, and then Harley had her situation. But what happened, apparently, as I watched the next day, was it we're about 5 o'clock till the 9 o'clock hour, or 5 o'clock. We're 5 o'clock to the we're, 9 o'clock hour here at the Cat Scan Show. Well, we're, it could be 25 or 6 to 4 now. <laughs> we were 5 minutes to 9 o'clock, is what I'm trying to say. A big uh, turning point in the ratings, and suddenly... Like Mussolini, making me trend. Here came our old friend Phil, CM Punk. And now we're just going, we've already talked about, and <clears throat> if you didn't hear it, folks, you can search it out, the clip on why we were forced to reference by the, the throngs of the cult of Cornette. We were forced to reference that Punk referenced us while he was referencing other people. But now we're going to talk about what the actual segment was. And, you know, again, I noted camera work on the entrances. You know, is fucking great. And Punk loves to... He's in his hometown. And he brings the people into it. He doesn't just go around and shake hands like every dry baby face. You know, he's up on the fucking desk. He, you know, he milks almost the whole song. Because <clears throat> if they're paying for it, why not? And, again, he talks to them and not at them. And the story he was telling was, is he going to be at WrestleMania? Well, a short version is yes, but to do what? And that's where should he be a host or should he referee? And he had the interchange with Pat McAfee about the podcast they listen to. And then, you know, he, he knocks Seth a little bit. And he said that somebody that hasn't mentioned me is The Rock. And 
Uh, I, we're not up. I'm not up. You may know, but he he said uh, the the history ten years ago when I went face or when the Rock went face to face with the Second City Saint, his arms were too short to box with God. Now, do we have a CM Punk victory in the archives over the Rock, or could that, or is is he talking about a promo where he scorched him, or what is that history? Was it the Rock's appearance that actually triggered the pipe bomb originally? The promo? It may have been. Because Punk was the champion, but The Rock was coming and getting pushed right to the top? Well, we, there, we all talk about the pipe bomb, but you never think about what triggered it. I think that may have been it. Yes, what was the detonator switch? So, well, there, well then in that case then, boom. I, I, I was hoping they had footage of him beating The Rock they could show sometime, but nevertheless. Uh, but he, he promoed Drew McIntyre. And he said, if you got a problem, you know, let's handle it face to face, you know, motherfucker. And, and also and he had made a couple of, you know, other witty remarks about his language and, you know, they're not on Netflix yet and whatever. But when he started talking about Drew, boom, here came Drew's music. And this turned into some different shit as soon as they did this, because as Drew's coming out with his entrance music, instead of punk being like every other dipshit in the world and standing there and just letting the music play and blah, 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 punk is on a microphone. Cut that bullshit music off, right? But turn that shit off. And, and he told it, get your bitch ass in here. Are you a Scottish psychopath in a kilt or an internet troll in a skirt? It is uh, automatically we've got goddamn actual people arguing with each other again instead of these fucking dramatic renditions of Shakespeare. And Drew McIntyre is great. And he was crowing about, you know, Punk would be at his mercy because he's hurt in the ring and he's wearing the T-shirt where he has the tombstone of Punk's mania main event or whatever and punk said i never had to put another man's name on a shirt to sell it i mean it's it's just it's not the bullshit that these phony fucking writers hand guys these are these guys doing this shit or at least they're modifying it and delivering it well because nobody else has been talking like this and <laughs> drew got back you don't drink or do drugs but you spend all your time in rehab because there's Punk with his arm brace on. That was fucking classic. And then they, uh, they Punk did the deal where he laid down in the ring, but uh, Drew got up on the desk and got cross-legged like Punk sits, and uh, Drew is gloating because he's the, uh, the in the position that Punk wants to be in. He's the chosen one. And Punk got up and said, who chose you? What what paragon of virtue chose you to be the chosen one? Say his name. Oh, fuck. That was fucking great. And they got the shot right on Drew's face when Punk said his eyes got a yes. little wide. You know, you didn't expect that. Yes. Well, yeah, because that's what it's supposed to be. Well, you see an opening, boom. And so then uh, somehow Drew, after they just did some great shit, the piece of business they're trying to do is that Drew challenged Punk, sit there at ringside, be the guest commentator for my match at WrestleMania, and sit there and have to watch me win, right? Win the title, my crowning achievement, and I'll rub it in your face. And then Seth's music starts playing. And as soon as he hears Seth's music, <laughs> Punk starts hitting himself in the head with the microphone slowly, like, what the fuck, another one of these motherfuckers? And Seth comes into the ring with Punk and the singing and the woeing. And then as soon as they bring it down, then the people in Chicago start chanting CM Punk, CM Punk. And of course, Seth Franklin Rollins has to welcome everybody to Monday Night Rollins in Punk's face, but then, you know, got some drowned out by some, some more chants and Punk's, hey, it's your show, but it's my city. And Seth, I, I guess they just put Seth out there to make sure that he was represented because he didn't add a lot to this. He, he said, you can't make decisions about a match that you're not in and I'm the champion, so let's take a fan poll. Did that make any sense, Brian? Not really. 
But at least the fans that were polled said, yes, we'd like to see Punk do the announcing. Actually, the fans first said, uh, chanted, referee, referee. And Punk said he couldn't be, he couldn't be a fair referee with these two dipshits involved. They bleep dipshits, but. So, anyway, um, Seth told Punk stay out of his way, and then Punk said, okay, you know, I'll be the announcer. And he basically, he wound it up with, I'll, I'll do what both of you could never do. I'll make you both sound interesting. And it hit my music and Punk's music starts playing and Drew is like, stop it, stop it. And he starts promo and Punk. And while he's doing that, Seth hits Drew with a super kick and a curb stomp and Drew's on his face and Punk's in the entryway and Seth did something and, but it, it was 20 minutes, but it was great. And you couldn't wait to see who, what was going to be said next by who. This was a fantastic segment. Drew McIntyre went from being boring to me thinking he needed time away just because nothing was happening. Yeah. Now I'm intrigued by him. Intrigued more by his personality than his matches, to be fair. But whenever he's out there and on the mic, stuff's happening. And it's been like this for a few months now. And him and Punk is the real dynamic. And then you get the Punk Rollins stuff. You know, Drew at least, I don't know, with Drew at least it was a back and forth. You know, Punk and Rollins, it was a one-sided thing. Rollins' music is over. Once the music ends and he's acting silly or trying to keep up with these two guys on the mic, I don't think it worked yeah. as well. Yeah. But great segment. And again, I don't know when Punk will be cleared. I got to think it's not going to be for a while. But if they get him on the show and they get segments like this, look at that number. How do you not do more stuff like this? Well, but you got to be careful. You can't just, uh, okay, here he is now every week, folks, and he's going to come out and say something. It still has to be special until they're ready to pull the trigger on something. But, uh, uh, you know, again, it sounds like actual, this sounds like an argument that Austin and Rock would have had 25 years ago. Except, you know, different personalities involved. But it's not this scripted you know, memorized, homogenized, pasteurized bullshit that we're used to. It's a, at least a little, a little fucking entertaining arguing instead of that. But then we came back with a girls match. And then we came back with the new day against DYI. And, or DY, do it yourself, do it yourself, DIY. And then they had Da Vinci versus Andre. And I'm thinking, well, there's been a lot of matches. And then suddenly we got back to wrestling. At the 10 o'clock hour was Rhea Ripley in the ring with Dominic Mysterio. And I must admit that I had, uh, at this point, I've had a little promo fatigue because how are you going to top the, you know, Cody's and then, you know, especially the Punk and Drew and blah, blah, blah. But it's Rhea. And she spoke for just a second, and then boom, and they played the music, and now they got Becky coming out. And so they pro and B Becky is very good, and Rhea, as we've talked about, is a prodigy with promos. Just, I don't know with everything, actually, but I don't know how she's gotten this, this good, but she has. But anyway, it was very good back and forth, and heartfelt about Rhea telling Becky that Becky's daughter is going to call me mommy. And Becky got pissed because her father didn't get to see her baby. So it's not a joke to her. And I, Brian, I think some women actually watch the WWF these days, right? Or WWE. Um, unlike an AEW product. So they're probably appealing to some women with the, the baby talk and everything, or the talking about the baby, not the baby. They weren't going the goo goo gaga. Oh, I'm going to beat you up. You yeah, big tough no, Rhea Ripley. Come get oh, me. Open up the hangar and let the airplane land. But you no, know, I mean, the you know. <laughs> what? That's the way you make the baby open the mouth to eat the, eat the pudding or the gruel or whatever oh, you feed the, babies. The gruel, the pudding. The hanger. What is going on? But anyway, they weren't baby talking to each other. They were talking about the baby. Is what they were, they were talking about the baby. And then they got face to face. 
And Dominic got in between them, and Becky punched Dominic. <laughs> and the girls got in a fight. And the shot she gave Dom, I know he probably said, yeah, go ahead and hit me, make it look good. But she pushed him right in the fucking jaw. Um, and the girls fought, and Rhea posted Becky and was going to help Dominic up. And then here came Becky, came back, and they got in a fight in the aisleway and had a pull apart with the referee. This was above the level of anything in terms of promo and physical execution that you're going to see probably on any random AEW television program, and it's their female division here. But this was three in a row for the live interview segments. They, It was good. We had some fatigue after the first two, but it was still, it was, it was good, good stuff, good stuff. What'd you think? You're a big Becky fan. I'm a big Rhea fan. I think Becky's all right. You know, when you see her next to Rhea, you realize, I don't know, I don't know if Becky's gotten smaller or whatever it is, but Rhea just, Rhea's in such great shape right now. There is a size discrepancy. There is. You know, it's been a while since they've done something like this with Dominic and Rhea together, so it kind of gives you a little bit of that, and yeah, I thought it was a good segment. I mean, they started every hour with a good segment. And then the pesky wrestling starts And then those matches, but none of the matches contain any of the people in the good segments, so it kind of works. Yeah. That's when you get a hot dog, you get some popcorn, or if you're in the arena, you get a hot dog and you get some popcorn, (laughs) whatever it may be. Well, and then we had hot dog versus popcorn, Bronson Reed versus Sami Zayn, where Gunther distracted um, Sami by standing there in the arena, along with another 15,000 people, and Bronson splashed Sami and and beat him, and again, we're getting Gunther and Sami at the uh, the pay-per-view. It could have been Gunther and Brock, and, you know, the rating scale may have been broken over here. And then we got Shaky Nakamura and Jey Uso in our television main event, which went about like you would expect it would until finally at ringside, Jimmy Uso and Solo appear. I know you're never going to believe this, but they, they just, they appeared. But suddenly Cody and Seth tackled them and got a big fight. And Cody fought Jimmy through... Cody fought Jimmy. It sounds like a high school fucking. Cody fought Jimmy through the entrance way while Seth and Solo stayed out at ringside, which allowed Drew McIntyre to bombard Seth from behind and run him into the post and then DDT him on the floor. So Seth Rollins is out of action. He's incapacitated. But in the ring, the match was still going on. So Jay hit shaky with a spear, boom, one, two, three. But meanwhile, Cody and Jimmy were in the back of the arena and fought out into the back door in the rain. It rainy night in Chicago. Just a rainy night oh, in Chicago. Oh, come on, come on. We're in the middle of a big review. And then suddenly two wrestlers fight out the back door. So they fought out the back door is what they did. Is that what they did? That's what they did. And then, boom, boom, boom. Uh, fucking, well, they he threw Jimmy out the back door, and he turned around, and he beat up Solo, and then The Rock, The Rock, suddenly, out of nowhere from behind, tackled fucking Cody and hammered him and beat him up with everything in the fucking back area there and ran him into the walls. And then threw him out the back door into the rain and followed him out there. And now we know Seth Rollins, Seth Franklin Rollins, Cody's partner in the big greatest tag match ever, has been laid out by Drew McIntyre at ringside. What we don't know is why that no other motherfucker from a baby face. (laughs) Thank you. I thought you were going to ignore that because it was The Rock. That was my biggest issue. What we don't know, I got to get the caveat out. What we don't know is why that every other baby face in the locker room or every referee or every official with the promotion that is, or anybody that has a monetary interest in the WrestleMania main events happening as they are advertised or the Chicago police department 
Adam I Pierce. Guess, Where's Adam Pierce? Adam Pierce. Adam Pierce wasn't even on the show here. Today. Was he? Did I miss him when I zipped through all the backstage bullshit? Oh, I don't know. Now you're making me doubt it, too. Forget well, but, but also, what about the Rosemont? I know the Chicago PD are out of jurisdiction. Rosemont, Illinois, has two deputies and a, and a mail clerk. So they could have sent... They don't have a squad car. They've got a fucking sidecar, but they could have sent somebody over. But nobody try as this thing goes very long. And it was good. Rock is kicking his shit out of Cody and running him into everything and beating him up and kicking him and trash talking him. And he runs Cody into the bus and Cody comes up bleeding. And Rock's cutting the promo on him the whole time, getting bleeped every once in a while. And then wipes Cody's blood on the weight belt and cuts the promo to Mama Rhodes. And then, and he's fulfilled what he whispered to Cody, and then he told Cody, and they played this unedited, obviously on the big screen in the building because all the people popped, but he's got Cody bleeding and beat up and shirt ripped off, and he's trash-talking him, and he looks at his face, and he says, this is what happens when you fuck with the final boss. And they bleeped the word fuck on TV, but the people heard it. They popped. It was a great action outside. We had legitimate blood, which we've needed in angles like this. It's The Rock. It's Cody. It's before WrestleMania. But nobody tried to do any fucking thing to get in the way. Yeah, I mean, let's, and, talk, let's talk about the positives. The Rock was great as a heel here. Cody took a great ass kicking. The rain added a lot. Yeah. It added a lot. It looked great back then. I mean, it just it looked great, but no one did anything. Dusty Rhodes regularly got his ass kicked. And if it was in a cage, baby faces would be trying to climb that thing like they were trying to get money. Yes. And if it was just him getting his ass kicked, the baby faces, baby faces you didn't even realize were friends with him, would hit the ring to try to stop whatever was happening and protect him and at times cradle him. I mean, it was ridiculous. They, they, would, be, they would be thrown out or laid out or they'd be locked in a, a fucking room somewhere or there would be some level of Something. explanation, Something. right? And that's just Dusty as an example because when we're talking Cody, a lot of times you think about the way Dusty would do things. That was the thing missing. The Rock kicking Cody's ass was great. The Rock was great here. But it went like five minutes. If it didn't go five minutes, it felt like it went five minutes with no one except the cameraman yes. seemingly aware of this. The monitors must have all been turned off. <laughs> and at some point, you would think the cameraman might say, you know, he's, he's really, he might hurt this guy real bad. Maybe I ought to call somebody. Just anything. Baby faces trying to get through the door. Baby faces getting tossed away by someone. I don't even know who. Solo. Something. Because, because, because the, that's the thing is they've made Solo a monster. Well, Cody fucking, I can't remember what he did to Solo, but he whacked him with something pretty good at the back door, and then we never saw him again. Five minutes later, he'd have been hit by a fucking truck. And so I know they can't, they don't want to distract attention and focus from their main point but having that on the periphery at the back door just this big skirmish going on and people trying to come through they they pulled a fucking front loader up to the back door they're having to run around the ticket fucking concourse i don't know right but a little service to that would have gone a long way but otherwise great stuff what do you think would end in the show this way well that's <laughs> You know, that's the way the wrestling show used to end with the goddamn biggest deal on it, didn't it? Always. And then we've gotten away from that because the wrestling shows have gotten so long, boring, and monotonous that most of the people are not still there at the end of the thing. But that's really what should happen because that's what used to keep people tuned in was to see the the main event or the Whatever was going to happen at the end, the you know, it's breaking down in fucking Tulsa, whatever. And now it's just kind of a fucking fart when you go off the air sometimes. Well, the guy won. Play his music. We'll see you later. Well, we'll see what happens, because that's one of the big differences between SmackDown and Raw. SmackDown, they'll peak sometimes with the last segment, but that's 9.45 to 10 o'clock. Raw, the last segment, is approaching 11 p.m. It's always the lowest of the night. 
if you start doing stuff like this, maybe some people will hang around. I mean, it'll be interesting. Well, and also with with uh, here's another thing. They didn't they didn't waste anything. We, I know some people will make this correlation, so I will nip it in the bud now. We have blistered Tony Khan in the past for putting a big angle on at the end of the show when the fucking viewership was lowest, right? And he would know that. Why'd you do that, you numbskull? Well, here's the thing. This is raw. They have not only a week and a half or whatever now before WrestleMania, but their highest rated show, SmackDown, that has even more viewers can recap this on Friday night for the benefit of anybody who may have missed it. So when, when Tony does something on Dynamite, when nobody's watching Dynamite, there's still more people that's watching any of his other shows that he can recap it on. You see what I'm saying to you? Yeah, I mean, it was an episode that told you you never know when The Rock will be there and you never know when something big will happen at the very end. It'll be interesting the more they start doing things like this, if they do, if it changes the viewing patterns. Yeah, and I think that's, that's what they've needed. But that was Raw, and that ended at 11 p.m. And at that point, Jim, depending on what city you are, if you're not in a city, you're shit out of luck. But if you're in a city, maybe you could order some food. It's pretty late. But what do you do? It's Raw. It's over. It's late. You need a good, healthy moo. You need a good, healthy moo and a meal. And we know some chef-crafted chefs. Uh, actually, the chefs are not crafted. We know some chefs that will craft some stuff for you. And here's the man who will craft the rest of this. Read Mr. Jim Cornette. Oh, my God. You know, and I don't think it's really healthy if you're eating dinner at 11 o'clock at night Eastern. Now, maybe if you're, if you're out there on the West Coast, they, they dine late out there because of all their traffic problems, right? <laughs> but uh, but, what if, but you're not going to bed, if you're not going to bed till 4, that's fine. That blow your mind? That no, that uh, that made me hit my wrong button. But oh. here's the thing that you could do. What you can do is you can just don't think about anything that was just said. Just get that completely out of your mind, and instead think about being hungry, folks. A lot of times you're hungry, but you got no time to eat. A lot of times you're hungry, but you got no time to go to the store. A lot of times you're hungry, but you got no time to cook. Right. What's a common factor in this whole thread? You got no time. It's a hurry, scurry, hustle and bustle type of world these days. You're flitting here. You're flitting there. You got work. You got school. You got kids. A lot of people have children. I've, I've heard this is a growing trend. And you don't have time to sit down and shop. And Well, you don't sit down when you shop unless you're one of those fat fucks that rides around on a goddamn fucking hover around at, at Walmart, but in that case, you're going to die soon anyway. But if you want to well, get well, healthy, let's, folks, let's not talk about when people will die. Let's talk about what people can eat to stay alive. Well, that's because fresh, never frozen food is what you need to eat, and you need to eat more quality stuff than what you might be stuffing down your gullet. But if you don't have any time, you can't spend any time on it. That's why our friends at Factor have the whole thing worked out. At factormeals.com, they will send you meals that are either calorie smart or keto or protein plus or vegan and veggie or veggie. whatever what, whatever you choose they'll send. But they only take two minutes to eat or two minutes to heat. Let me try that you again. You can eat only... them in as much time as you need. You there is no time the... limit on how long you need to ingest you your You can meal. take all the time you want. If you're in a contest, you could eat them in less than two minutes. But they take they take two minutes to heat, and then you can eat them at your leisure and convenience, folks. They've got a weekly menu of 35 different options and more than 60 add-ons every week. They got breakfast. They got on-the-go lunch. They got stay-at-home, be hooked up to a machine lunch. They've got snacks. They got beverages. Stuff to make you feel good all day long. Apparently, Viagra would be... I guess involved what? in this. If, no. Well, it said feel good all Vi day long. Viagra is not involved in this in oh, any just, way whatsoever. Just vegan and veggie. Well, not just vegan and veggie, but also keto, also calorie Well, but no smart. Viagra. Because a lot of people have gone on this, this new diet that's a fad thing. It's the vegan veggie Viagra diet. But that's not this. Who's doing that? Well, a lot of people out in California 
But if you're looking for gourmet meals, we'll try meals that feature premium ingredients like filet mignon, shrimp, truffle butter. I didn't know you could make butter out of truffles. I've had nut butter before. <laughs> what? What's the more you All grind right. up? Right the... down your funnel. Yeah. Gray, you know they also make almond milk. Did you? Know I did that? know that. Of course I yeah. knew that. And nut butter and you can you can choose broccolini and asparagus. Broccolini. I had broccolini. I've had that. That's delicious. Yeah, well, there you go. Have some more. Because these are no fuss, no mess meals. The factor meals eliminate the hassles of prepping, cooking, and cleaning up. You take your little it's actually it's in a little plastic tray. It's like something they'd give you in jail. And once you finish eating out of this, you just fucking toss it in the garbage. It's good to nobody at that point. You're not gonna rewash this thing and use it again. So you just eliminate it. And then boom, you're cleaned up. Just heat this up and Eat it and then ask no questions and throw the the evidence away. People will not know where it came from. What, I don't, I don't know and what it has can, to do with anything. Eat it and enjoy it and tell whoever you want that you enjoyed it and you ate it. Well, yeah, if it's any of their business, if they if they question you hard enough, you've got to admit something. You know, go ahead and tell them. And they tailor this to your schedule, folks. You can customize your weekly meals with the flexibility to get as much or as little as you need. Let's say you figure, I only need a couple of walnuts and a grape to get me by on Tuesday. But then uh, some days you may want to eat normally as humans would. And you can pause or reschedule deliveries to suit your lifestyle. Let's say you're going to be going down the river for a few months. You can put the pause on it. And that way they won't pile up on your front porch while you're boarding with the warden on the bounty of the county. Folks, again, we're and they're celebrating Earth Day all month long. Now, that sounds like a contradiction in terms. It should be Earth Month, but only at Factormeals.com do you get Earth Month instead of Earth Day. And you can look out right now for on, on, on Factormeals.com, Brian. This is very important. Look out for the Earth Month Eats badge on the menu to determine which of the fine foodstuffs uh, contain the lowest carbon footprint meals. So that, that means that these meals, fewer people have stepped on these meals than any of the other regular meals offered at factormeals.com. Some of those get walked on quite often. No. But they've got the Tony Atlas special. No, they don't. Head to factormeals.com right now, folks, slash JCE50. Use that code JCE50 to get 50% off your first box, plus 20% off your next box. When have you ever been able to get money off your first box and money off your second box at the same time? This is unheard of. It's a whole new deal. Factormeals.com slash JCE50. 50% of the code is JC50. I don't know, you might have to put it in twice. That's because you're going to get two deals. 50% off your first box, 20% off your next box. And then, well, after that, you're going to goddamn get greedy then. So you're not getting any more than that. They've practically given you half your fucking, well, they've given you more than half your food here. Fucking greedy bastards. No one's being anyway, greedy here, but get your good eats, get the good food, the healthy food, the chef-crafted food from Factor. You, you, you can't even really call them eats. It's not like it's some kind of diner somewhere on the side of the road, some greasy spoon. This, These are chef-crafted prepared meals here by crafted chefs, and they do arts and crafts. Also, some of some of the chefs do arts and crafts as therapy from where they were in the home. No, no one was in the home. The home. No one was in the home, ladies and gentlemen. Well, but you don't know. You know. You know. Just by goddamn odds, somebody involved in this whole chain of of custody here, from the customer to us to the p people over at Factor Meals, has been in a home before. I'm sure. Probably against their will. You can't just make a blanket statement. Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about your home and let's talk about the food in your home, in your kitchen, the food you need to cook and you don't have the yes. time. Treat yourself well with Factor.
right here. Just pop this stuff in and eat it. Like I said, cover your tracks afterwards. They'll be none the wiser. You'll eat it in two minutes or less, guaranteed by Jim Cornette. Yes, just start shoveling it in. Don't even use silverware. No. Folks. No. Seriously, it's delicious, so take your time. It's Well, if it's delicious, you'd want to eat it quicker before somebody steals it from you. But if you take your time, you savor each bite, you savor every taste, you really enjoy the meal. Well, then it might get cold. Well, you can't take too much time. Well, you can't just sit on this forever. Don't sit on this forever, folks. Because sometimes you'd be sitting somewhere else forever. Head to factormeals.com right now slash JCE50 to get all these percentages off all of your food and and don't worry about it It'll, things will be fine that's right they'll be fine with factor what's that promo code one more time jim jce50